Hello and welcome back to Creative Pet Keeping. In today's video, I'm going to show you one of the many different methods I use to do water changes on my bed of fry grow out jars. This is the fastest method, but not the most efficient in terms of cleaning entirely. I just use a siphon to siphon out 90% of the water from the jar versus the 100% water change. This usually takes me about 15 minutes to change the water on 14 jars at the moment. So it is definitely faster than taking out all of the water, taking out all the fish and individually cleaning each jar. But the downside is you don't get all of the debris. As you can see, I'm trying to get as much of the debris on the bottom by siphoning up the bottom. But because I do have to leave 10% of the water for the bed of fish, uh, because of that, I'm not entirely getting everything. So when you pour your water back in you will get a little bit of debris back into the water when doing this be careful not to accidentally suck up your fish I have a little barrier in my siphon that prevents me from doing so but I still am careful nonetheless so now I'm preparing the water first I add some kosher salt it's pretty much the same thing as aquarium salt it is just salt that has no caking uh, ingredients in it and then I start to pour in the water so it can mix and of course add the prime so I can remove chlorine chloramine and ammonia from my water to keep my little fishy safe of course this is the last of this bottle but I always have a bottle ready so I've never really run out of this stuff now I like to use a different bucket for putting the water back in because this is a clean water that doesn't have any fish waste in it and also prevents the spread of disease because the bucket that had the old water in it can always have some sort of bacteria. Pre-mixing also allows me to get the correct temperature without shocking my fish with water that is either too hot or too cold. So here is a closer look at the jars. As you can see, I put enough water so the fish is submerged, but also try to get as much water out as possible. And now we're going back up over here looking at all the fish fishy fish so now i am filling the jars back up i had to grab these two because the little air system was kind of in the way but for the rest i just pour water back and there's no magical or fancy technique to this i just try to be somewhat quick and efficient when doing this uh, just a disclaimer these are not permanent setups for these bettas as always when you breed betta fish you have to temporarily jar them to grow them out to prevent them from fighting because they are very very aggressive fish ah uh, it's so satisfying to look at jars with clean water after that i just wipe the jars a little bit just so they're nice and clean and there's no little stains from the water droplets and so i can better see my cute little fish you think we're done? Nope, no, no we're not. Now it's time to put on the lids. I have these lids from the beanie containers and they have some pre-drilled holes in them that I drilled myself. Also, you can actually buy those square containers on Amazon. I'll have a link down below. So I cover up some of the jars. I'm gonna afterwards cover up the rest, but meanwhile, I'm gonna start to card my fish. Now I partially card them because I've tried a couple different things. I've tried fully carding them and they tend to get depressed if I keep them uncarded all day they lose interest in each other but if I partially card them they feel very secure in their little territory but every now and then two fish will be in the same spot at the same time and they'll see each other and they could flare and exercise and this provides them with the mental stimulation that they, they need different breeders have different methods that they use but this is what works best for me here is another look at the bettas after their water change happened. You can kind of see the different colors I have. I still have more that are growing out in their grow out tank as well. Just like last year, this year's spawn produced koi, cellophanes, and two types of uh, metallics. One a more darker bodied that has more of a bluish base and another one that is more of a reddish base. And if you can see, my little cellophane is hiding on their left side in the plants. This is why I like to provide plants for them so in case they are a little nervous and shy they can hide and feel secure and yeah that is my video i hope that you enjoyed it if you did don't forget to subscribe and hit that notification bell so you won't miss out on future videos and get a notification anytime there is a magical beta update i'll see you guys in the next video